Welcome to the Self-Publishing Tips and Tricks Show, a series designed to give you insight into the world of self-publishing and marketing your books. Featuring your hosts, Shannon, the author behind the pen name SC Houston, Ben Pick, and Morgan Lee. Join us several times each month when we interview authors about their self-publishing and marketing journeys, talk to industry leaders, and discuss books about writing, self-publishing, and marketing. Hello and welcome. I'm Shannon, your host for this week's Self-Publishing Tip or Trick of the Week. First, I want to thank everyone who has tuned in for the self-publishing tip or trick of the week. This was an idea I had because I love sharing all the information I've learned while on my self-publishing journey. However, these episodes don't appear to be as popular as our longer episodes with our core audience. And because I'm always trying to find more time to write, this will be the last tip or trick of the week. With that said, if something excites me, I might do a self-publishing tip or trick as a short, unscheduled episode. Although I wouldn't be looking for too many of these as we get closer to the AuthorTube Writing Conference at the end of June. Speaking of conferences, I just attended Book Marcon this past weekend, a conference focused on book marketing, and I learned quite a bit. However, there was one thing that I hadn't heard of before, so I thought I'd share it with you in case you haven't heard of this tip as well. Today, I am discussing a valuable tip, getting a Library of Congress Control Number, or LCCN, for your book. An LCCN is a unique identification number assigned by the Library of Congress. It's different from an ISBN and copyright registration. So before we dive into the LCCN, let's set the stage by understanding its cousins in the publishing world, the ISBN and copyright. The International Standard Book Number, or ISBN, is a unique identifier for books, primarily for booksellers and distributors, used in identifying your specific book edition and format. Copyright, on the other hand, protects your work from being reproduced illegally, ensuring you maintain the rights to your content. It's automatically assigned upon creation, but registering it provides legal benefits. Unlike the ISBN and copyright registration, the LCCN isn't about sales or copyright. It's about cataloging and bibliographic management, primarily within library systems, especially the Library of Congress in the United States. This creates an official national record of your book's publication. An LCCN is not the same as a copyright registration and does not provide copyright protection, even though both are filed with the Library of Congress. You still need an ISBN for sales channels and should consider copywriting, but the LCCN serves a distinct purpose. It's also important to note that you can only register printed books and not ebooks for LCCN and only before they are published. Because I'm learning about LCCNs right now, I wouldn't be able to apply for any of the books I've already published. Also, so unlike an ISBN, of which you will have more than one number if you have multiple formats and or editions of your book, with an LCCN, you only need one number. In other words, your LCCN identifies the book itself and the ISBN identifies each format or edition of the book. LCCNs are useful for nonfiction, technical, research, or how-to learning books that you want to make available for libraries. But many authors also use an LCCN to enhance credibility. If you want your book to be cataloged at the Library of Congress, which is the largest library, then you need an LCCN number. If you want to sell your book online in bookstores and libraries, then you only need an ISBN, not an LCCN. The Library of Congress uses a system called a pre-assigned control number, PCN, to assign your book an LCCN before publication. This allows you to include the information on your copyright page. Having an LCCN adds credibility and legitimacy to your book, and it becomes more accessible to libraries, increasing your potential readership and visibility. It's also important to note that LCCNs are primarily for U.S authors. For those outside the U.S., an LCCN can still be vital if you're selling or hoping to have your books in U.S. libraries, broadening your international reach, but there are some eligibility requirements you have to pass first, and I would assume that many people wouldn't have these requirements. For those in the U.S. looking to get an LCCN, it is a two-step process. Start by ensuring your book is eligible. Generally, it should be intended for a wide distribution to libraries and not just a personal project. If your book is eligible, then you can complete the first step, submitting an application. The whole process for an LCCN for self-publishers is automated and completed online before your book is published. Visit the Library of Congress's website and navigate to the pre-assigned control number program. You'll need to create an account and submit an application providing details about your book. This includes your book metadata, so you'll want to have this ready to go as the system does not save your application midway through. The process generally takes one to two weeks, but here's some good news. There's no cost to apply for an LCCN, making it an accessible step for all authors. 
However, once published as the second and final step in the process, you need to send a copy of your print book to the Library of Congress using the details provided during the application process. Securing an LCCN is a step toward greater visibility and professional standing in the publishing world. It's a testament to your dedication to your craft and your audience. Remember, each step you take from securing an ISBN and copyright to obtaining an LCCN is a building block in your publishing journey. Embrace the process and see where these steps can take you in your work. Thank you for being here for the last weekly tip or trick. Next on the Self-Publishing Tips and Tricks podcast, we'll have a special discussion episode all about marketing with a few guest authors who have been on the show before. Thank you so much to our incredible listeners and viewers for joining us on our exploration of everything self-publishing. We hope you found our podcast to be a treasure trove of insights and inspiration. If you've enjoyed the show, please consider leaving a review on your favorite podcast platform or thanks on our YouTube episodes. Don't forget, you can catch all of our past episodes on YouTube, Spotify, and other major podcast platforms. Keep writing, keep publishing, and we'll see you next time.